So AMD just announced the 100 and 120 dollar Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300 X CPUs, but there was another bit of info that you might have missed that dropped at the same time on May 7th. Further specs and details about the new budget B550 chipset. It has PCI Express 4.0 support, two-way GPU support, and boards could be available starting at $100 and up, but it's not launching until June 16th and it will not support first and second gen Ryzen CPUs. So today I'll be going over the important details to help answer that PC building question that never seems to go away. Buy now or wait. Specifically this time, the wait would be for B550. Uh, also, there are five motherboards that we can take a closer look at starting today. Excellent! The new ASUS VG259QM gaming monitor from the Tough Gaming VG display series features a 24.5 inch full HD IPS panel with an ultra fast refresh rate overclockable to an astounding 280 Hertz. It's NVIDIA G-Sync compatible too, which practically eliminates ghosting and tearing for a sharp and fluid gaming experience. It also sports an extremely fast one millisecond response time thanks to ASUS extreme low motion blur sync technology and its display HDR400 certified as well. Click the sponsor link in the description for more. So if there is any bad news about what has been shared, it's that CPU support is more limited with B550. AMD is only supporting 3000 series CPUs and 4000 series CPUs. That's 3000 series CPUs minus the 3200G and 3400G APUs because these are actually 12 nanometer 2000 series parts under the hood. But these promised 4000 series CPUs are expected to launch later in 2020. Now, if you wanna know why this limitation exists, uh, it's actually because AM4 has been around for so long that it has too many CPUs to account for. The programmable memory that your BIOS uses to store data is a finite resource, and each CPU entry in the supported CPUs list takes up space. Older 300 and 400 series boards simply don't have enough room to be updated with another list of CPUs to support, at least not without bumping off some older CPUs to make space, but that would be a bit of a nightmare for legacy support and which boards support which CPUs with different BIOS updates, so AMD decided to simplify things for B550. Practically speaking though, I think the only people who might be upset by this would be those who are happy with their first or second gen Ryzen CPU, like say you got a 2700X when it first launched, but you want a new motherboard for some reason. I think this is probably not very common. Most people who are considering an upgrade are doing it for either access to PCIe 4.0, in which case you would need both a 3000 series CPU and a 500 series motherboard anyway, or possibly for the better efficiency and IPC performance of seven nanometers N2, in which case you could get by just fine with a 3000 series CPU and an existing 300 or 400 series motherboard, you just wouldn't have PCIe 4.0 support. So hopefully this chart makes things a little bit more clear. The processor series are over on the left and the chipsets are on the top. And as you can see, this future AMD Ryzen desktop processors with Zen 3 architecture, which refers to the aforementioned 4000 series, will only work with X570 and B550. But for all intents and purposes, if you're rocking a 3000 series processor, you should probably be rocking a 400 series motherboard, and if you're looking forward to 4000 series CPUs, those will need one of these 500 series motherboards. Of course, once the 500 series motherboards launch, which is on June 16th, you will be able to slot in an existing 3000 series CPU. Whatever you want to do though, I think you have reasonable AM4 options available. Speaking of reasonable options, the new Ryzen 3 3100 and 3300X CPUs are competitively priced at $100 and $120 respectively. They support PCIe 4.0, but they would need to be paired with an X570 motherboard right now in order to take advantage of all those bandwidths from PCIe 4.0. Good X570 boards are about $200 and up, or even significantly higher than that. So B550 makes a lot of sense as a budget option with Gen 4 support, but pricing might be a little bit closer to the X570 boards than B450, at least according to some of the board partners that I have talked to today. AMD said they'll start at $100, but if I had to guess, I would say that good ones, good B550 motherboards with reasonable power delivery and useful options will be in the $140 to $160 range. That's probably okay because the extra 40 to 50 bucks you'd spend over a B450 board does get you some nice bonuses. So let's talk B550 upgrades and features. And uh, one of the best features, in my opinion, isn't shared in this document, and in fact, is something that is not there anymore. There is no chipset fan required this time around for B550. I don't like little chipset fans, and almost all X570 motherboards require one, so having that not be a thing is a good thing. 
Here is a chipset comparison though, which should lay things out a little bit more clearly when it comes to the differences between B450, B550, and X570. B550 is almost identical to X570 with the PCI Express Gen 4 upgrade applying to the 16 PCIe lanes dedicated to the GPU and PCI Express expansion slots. And crucially, this also applies to the four lanes set aside for high-speed NVMe SSDs. Current GPUs won't really see too much of a performance bump with PCIe 4.0 since there's already enough bandwidth for modern GPUs using PCIe 3.0, but NVMe SSDs can go well beyond what Gen 3 is capable of, so the Gen 4 support here is very nice and will be useful for people who need the speed. You also get an upgrade to native USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, and then of course you got that dual graphics support for two-way SLI and Crossfire setups, which I don't mind having, but dual GPU configs aren't really what they used to be these days. This means the real difference here is in the chipset connection to the CPU, which is PCIe Gen 4 with X570 and PCIe Gen 3 with B550. That is a little bit of an upgrade for the general purpose lanes over the Gen 2 lanes from B450. Basically what this means is that additional PCIe expansion slots and M.2 slots that are routed through the chipset won't support PCIe 4.0. That's pretty much it for the features, so let's take a look at some of the actual motherboards. I have pictures of five of them from Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, ASRock, and Biostar. These are supposedly high-end B550 boards, so they'll probably be more expensive, but hopefully not quite as expensive as their X570 counterparts. So for starters, here is the Asus ROG Strix B550-E Gaming. And of course, a big feature of these motherboards that I'm not gonna be able to talk about right now is the power delivery configuration, and you really can't get into the details of that unless you take off the heat sinks and look at the components that are used. Buildzoid and Hardware Unbox do a great job of analyzing the uh, VRM solutions for these as well as the cooling on them, so uh, we'll, we'll stay tuned for that. As far as power delivery though, when it comes to the power supply connection, we have a four pin and an eight pin. A decent amount of fan headers, we got three over there on the right. A couple more down here at the bottom. These are also flanked by uh, a addressable and a non-addressable RGB fan header. As for premium features for this motherboard, it does have a debug LED, although it does not appear to have surface mounted power and reset buttons. Debug LED is very convenient. One feature I look for on mid-range to higher end motherboards is this USB 3.2 uh, front panel connector because that's something that's often left out. And if you have a case with it, it's really worth hooking up, especially if you connect external SSDs. Beyond that, you've got dual M.2 drives, both with heat sinks. And, uh, and, and hey, check out, check out the sticker they put on that uh, CMOS battery, isn't that? It's a nice sticker. Supreme FX Audio 2, it looks like it does have a fixed IO shield as far as I can tell, so pretty nice looking motherboard. I, I kind of like the glitched ROG logo there as well. Here's the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master, and this is a motherboard that I believe with both their X570 and B450 motherboards. It was a really popular one for them. Reasonably priced and pretty well designed. Looks like uh, similar to Asus down here, we have both addressable and non-addressable RGB headers. They have added, ooh, addressable and non-addressable at the top as well. The Asus board did have a non-addressable one at the top and bottom, and it seemed like just a single addressable. Eight pin plus four pin for the power delivery there. Something called direct touch on the heat sink. I'm guessing that means a heat sink directly touching the uh, heat generating components of the VRMs, that, that would make sense. We also have a debug LED here, although it does not look like we're getting that front panel USB 3.2 Gen 2 connector. Instead, they've opted for not two, but three M.2 drive slots here, again, all with heat sinks on them. Got amp up audio over there and a uh, pretty, pretty decent looking board. I'd say the only thing I'm really missing out on here is that USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel. Oh, also it does look like it has a fixed IO shield as well. I hope that's just something that all motherboards have now and we'll stop, we'll stop talking about it because it will become a given. But anyway, here's the MSI MPG B550 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi, which also appears to have a fixed IO shield as well as Wi-Fi. That's why they put Wi-Fi in the name. Same power connection for the power supply. It looks like you've also got uh, a addressable RGB LED header at the, there at the top. Four fan headers conveniently located. It does have the USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel header. I like that. Another RGB LED header down there at the bottom, as well as some other functions like a surface mounted clear CMOS switch. This one does not appear to have a debug LED or a fancy sticker on the CMOS battery. Of course, that's, that's, that's probably a minor issue there. And again, we're looking at two M.2 slots, both with the heat sinks on them. 
And again, a nice looking design, I'd say, for the uh, chipset heatsink there, and just so happy that uh, those, those heatsink fans aren't required anymore. Here's the ASRock V550 Tai Chi. It looks like they've gone with a bit of a gold accents on here. Not bright and garish gold, but maybe slightly more towards a bronze gold. I don't think they look too bad, at least not in this picture. Again, some LED headers at the top. It looks like we've got H plus H for the uh, power delivery here, although again, the components underneath the heat sinks are going to be more important than the connection to the power supply. I like the ASRock uh, Tai Chi boards because they have fairly simple BIOS configurations. They usually have pretty well built power delivery configurations and they tend to be a pretty good bang for the buck. You got the USB 3.2 Gen 2 front panel connection over here, a couple USB 3.0 headers. Down here at the bottom, you've got surface mounted uh, LED debug as well as power and reset switches. Those are really convenient. It looks like you got a clear CMOS next to that as well. And then a fairly substantial cover over the lower portion of the board here, which makes it slightly more dif difficult to determine the M.2 configuration, but I'm pretty sure there's one right there with those two screws. And then there's one down here just above the lowermost PCIe expansion slot. Again, we appear to have a fixed IO shield and Wi-Fi integration too. Actually, I just looked again and it looks like all these motherboards have Wi-Fi except potentially this one. And I can't verify that for sure. It's just, I don't see the uh, connectors for the antenna here on the back. This is a Biostar motherboard though, the Biostar Racing B550 GTQ, which I think, I think stands for great quality or something like that, I forget. But uh, this is a simpler board. It's also a micro ATX board. Uh, I like micro ATX, it's a good form factor. So power delivery here is gonna be a little bit more simple. You've only got an eight pin connection coming from the motherboard. Three RGB LED headers all the way up here on the top right. Looks like two addressable and one non-addressable. So that's convenient if you're into the RGBs. No front panel USB 3.2 Gen 2, unfortunately, but you do have two M.2 expansion slots. It looks like you're not gonna get support for extremely lengthy ones, but probably 2280 support with these, which is fine. That's what most uh, M NVMe SSDs are anyway. And again, I can't tell for sure, but it does look like you probably get a fixed IO shield even on this board too. So that's cool as well. And then aesthetically, I don't know, is this, I'm guessing this is an RGB light here. I don't think this board looks too bad. It, it, it doesn't look quite as good as the other ones, but this is probably going to be a less expensive board. So just a quick look at some of the motherboard options that are going to be available. In closing though, I want to compare and contrast the two motherboard series that are launching in the next month or so, as well as the future CPU launches from both AMD and Intel. On the AMD side, we have heard about the upcoming Zen 3 based 4000 series CPUs, even though we still don't know exactly when they will launch. AMD didn't have to state publicly that these new B550 boards and X570 boards for that matter will support 4000 series, but they did. I appreciate that. Intel, by comparison, is about to launch a new platform and the LGA 1200 socket for their Comet Lake S 10th gen CPUs, which still lack PCIe Gen 4 support. Similarly, we have heard that they're also going to work on an 11th gen core series codenamed Rocket Lake that will support Gen 4, might be out at the end of 2020 or beginning of 2021, but motherboard manufacturers like MSI, Gigabyte, Asus are already specifically talking about the PCIe 4.0 capabilities of the new Z490 boards, even though 10th gen CPUs are limited to gen three. It seems very clear to me that Rocket Lake or Rocket Lake S at least will be LGA 1200 compatible, but Intel still won't make any promises. I wish they would because DIY builders love to upgrade and the promise of a viable upgrade path is one of the core reasons I have spoken so highly of AMD's decisions with the AM4 platform over the past few years. They told us with the launch of first gen Ryzen in March, 2017, that this would be the mainstream platform through 2020 and they have delivered on that promise. Anyway though, there are over 60 B550 motherboards in development, says AMD, and they will be available starting June 16th. So if you're looking for a good pairing for a 3100 or 3300X and you can really make use of PCIe Gen 4, I think it's worth holding out for about a month. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video though. I will put relevant links to important stuff down in the description. So go ahead and click all those things. Uh, and let me know in the comment section if you're holding out for B550 or if you can make do with the B450 or X570 for now. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my store at paulshardware.net for shirts, mugs, bottle openers, other cool stuff that you can buy. Hit the thumbs up button on your way out, of course, if this video made you think happy thoughts, and we'll see you in the next one.